Hello everybody, today we're in Washington DC. We're at the Atlas Economic Research Foundation headquarters and I'm with uh, Tom Palmer. It's a great privilege to be with you today. Thank you, Jason. And uh, so I want to talk about a lot of stuff. You have a new book coming out, uh, Realizing Freedom, and then uh, it's rather recent that you launched the Atlas Global Initiative, but um, let's take it back to the beginning and uh, how did you discover the, these ideas of uh, freedom? I think that some of the important moments were reading uh, Frederick Bastiat. And that moment, I was a high school student, and I got a little card for the Freeman, published by Foundation for Economic Education. And I'm not alone in this. It changed a lot of people's lives. I got that. It was clear. It challenged me. It got me to think about things. And when I got the Bastia idea, what is seen, what is not seen, the world doesn't show up the same way anymore. You see the cost of things, not just what happened because the state did something, but what didn't happen because the state did that. It's more likely to bring you to an appreciation of liberty because you see that the world isn't governed by magic. There's cause and effect just as there is in physical reality, political or legal or economic reality, is governed by cause and effect as well. And that had a big impact on me and it led me to read Henry Hazlitt and Ludwig von Mises and Friedrich Hayek and just a whole array of other people. And I was an activist in high school and uh, whole range of different ways and then college and was active in a lot of different libertarian activist organizations. I did writing, I edited publications, uh, some of which were pretty boring, on tax policy and the like. I was a lobbyist for free trade, I was a lobbyist on a number of organizations, uh, worked against military conscription, it was a really passionate cause for me was National Secretary of the Committee Against Registration and the Draft to, to oppose reintroduction of conscription. Uh, so a lot of different things that I've done over the years. I've occupied sort of every niche uh, in the <laughs> libertarian movement that you could imagine. So you launched the uh, Global Initiative recently, and, and but it focuses on more, uh, more the digital, the internet and websites. Can you kind of outline the strategy behind all that? Not quite though, actually. It looks like it focuses on the digital, and of course we do as much as we can with digital media and exploring new frontiers that are a little difficult for my mind to wrap themselves around like Twitter and so on. Get in there. Uh, but we're, I'm figuring it out. Uh, but the way that we've done this is to launch uh, platforms. These are not just websites. Each one is a platform. It has a brand. So Minbar al Khuriya in Arabic means the Forum of Liberty. Minbar al org is the name. And then every product is branded, so we do a lot of books. We have many books available. You can buy them in Arabic bookstores, uh, whether you're in Cairo or Dubai or, or, or Fez or uh, Amman, you can find these uh, pro-liberty books there. Uh, we do videos. We're doing summer schools. In fact, this year in Arabic, we'll have two summer schools on libertarian ideas in the Arabic language, one in Morocco, one in Lebanon. So tell us about Realizing Freedom, your new book. It, I mean, it's uh, made up primarily of essays that I've written over the last two decades or so uh, on the theory of individual rights, the theory of spontaneous order, civil society. There's a lot of history in it also. Uh, I believe that uh, history is an underrated uh, discipline of liberty and that if we want to understand institutions, practices, and ideas, looking at their historical trajectory, where they came from, how they developed. In essence, to what problems were these offered as the answers? And why did some persist and others not? That's a very important dimension of understanding freedom. So there's a lot of history in the book. Uh, I think the U.S. is going through a very bad period right now for a number of reasons. Uh, the catastrophe of the uh, Bush administration and what we found out is divided government is beneficial for liberty. When one party controls both branches of government, get ready for lots of spending, lots of pork barrel, lots of special interests, and war. Now we're in a situation in which war, economic crisis, substantially provoked by the overspending and the cheap, easy credit and intervention of the housing markets and so on, provoking a crisis and a new president coming in saying, I have to do something about it. This is my moment. It's yeah. awful, just awful. And I'm very fearful about the potential for protectionism as well. So this is a bad patch right now. But if you take the longer run perspective, remember, 
we will get through this. We have to stick to our principles, educate, explain, and confront power whenever we can. Uh, it's not over, and the current problems in the U.S. merely make me want to fight harder and not to give up or retreat into some little cave someplace or into my private study. Uh, this is the moment to fight uh, against statism and in behalf of liberty. All right, Tom. Well, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank, thank you.